Spring is such an exciting time of the year with birds making their way back to our home state. Hi, my name is Mandy and I'm an environmental education specialist with the Pennsylvania Game Commission. Today, I want to teach you about one of those birds, one that is admired by many for the bright blue color and beautiful song. It's the Eastern Bluebird. The Eastern Bluebird is a member of the thrush family, which includes the American Robin. Bluebirds can be identified by both sight and sound. Male bluebirds have bright blue feathers on their head, back, wings, and tail. Their throat, upper chest, and flanks are a reddish brown color, and their lower belly is white. The female looks very similar to the male, but she's more drab in color. Her head appears grayish and her back a dull brown color. Her tail and wings have brighter blue feathers, which are more visible when she is flying. Her dull plumage helps her hide from predators when she is vulnerable during the nesting season. Eastern bluebirds are one of Pennsylvania's beloved songbirds, so let's listen to their beautiful sound for a moment. Some eastern bluebirds live here year-round, while others fly south for the winter. Bluebirds live in semi-open habitats like forest clearings, parks, and even some backyards. They prefer these semi-open landscapes so they can hunt for the insects that they eat. During the spring and summer, bluebirds eat insects such as grasshoppers, beetles, and caterpillars. They typically hunt from a low-lying branch. In the fall and winter, they feed on several fruits from shrubs and trees such as sumac, dogwood, and wild cherry. The bluebird is a cavity nester, which means they build their nest and raise their young in hollow cavities. Cavities may be created by a decaying tree or from a woodpecker. Bluebirds will also use man-made cavities, such as a nest box. They are the only members of the thrush family to nest in cavities. There are other native cavity nesters in Pennsylvania, and so bluebirds have some competition for nest sites. Some other native cavity nesting birds include the tree swallow, the tufted titmouse, and the black-capped chickadee. There are also non-native cavity nesting species that live in Pennsylvania. One is the house sparrow and the other is the European starling. These species were introduced from Europe. Both species are aggressive competitors of our native cavity nesting birds. Beginning in March, a male or a mated pair of bluebirds will usually return to their breeding grounds searching for nest sites. They are one of Pennsylvania's earliest nesters. Males will establish a territory and begin to attract a female. The male performs a series of behaviors to court the female, such as aerial displays and singing to her. When they finally pair, the male will feed the female, and this is called mate feeding. They will also preen each other's feathers. While the male establishes the breeding territory, it is the female that makes the final selection of the nest site. You may see males carry nest materials, but it's typically just for display. It's the female that does almost all of the nest building. Nest building can take one to six days. The female builds a cup-shaped nest inside the cavity, typically made out of fine grasses and sometimes pine needles. After the nest is built, the female lays one egg a day until she has a full clutch. She may lay up to seven eggs, but four or five are most common. She begins to incubate after the last egg is laid. Eggs are usually laid in the morning. Eastern bluebird eggs are plain and light blue in color. A small percentage of eggs may be white. Incubation lasts about two weeks. The chicks usually hatch within 24 hours. Newborns are featherless, blind, and are a peachy orange color. The female broods the nestlings until they develop feathers and can stay warm simply by eating enough. Both parents feed the young. They feed the chicks several times an hour. After about a week, the chicks have feathers and their eyes are open. The young will remain in the nest for about 16 to 21 days. Looking at the male in this photo, you notice something white in his beak. He is removing a fecal sac, also known as waste, created by the nestlings. It's sort of like he's changing a dirty diaper. He will carry the waste far away. By doing this, it helps keep the nest clean and limits odor that may attract predators. Once the bluebirds are ready to leave the nest, they fly to a nearby tree. They're capable of flying for short distances. 
When birds leave the nest, they are referred to as fledglings. Fledglings will remain dependent on their parents to feed them for three to four weeks until they learn to survive on their own. They will remain in their juvenile plumage until their first molt in the fall. After the first brood, the adults will typically nest again. Eastern bluebirds flourished in our state in the late 1800s, early 1900s, when forests were logged over and several farms existed, creating the type of habitat that they preferred. This was also a time prior to the European starlings and the house sparrows creating stiff competition for nest sites. With time, however, bluebird populations began to drastically decline. The combination of non-natives competing for their nest sites, forests returning and farms disappearing, as well as DDT and insecticide disrupting the reproduction, the future of the eastern bluebird looked grim. In the 1960s and 70s, a glimmer of hope appeared when people noticed the bluebird populations were declining and decided to try and help them. Thousands of people began to place artificial nest boxes in their backyards and began creating bluebird trails. It worked. Their population increased and these efforts continue today, keeping their populations up. The Game Commission's Howard Nursery near Milesburg manufactures about 15,000 nest boxes each year. Anyone can participate in this bird conservation activity by placing and monitoring a nest box in suitable habitat. Let's talk about how you can do just that. After you purchase or build a nest box, it's all about location, location, location. Nest boxes should be placed in semi-open habitats that the bluebirds prefer and where you can monitor them easily each week, such as your backyard. Nest boxes should be placed on a pole about four to five feet off of the ground at eye level to make it easy for you to check the box. The entrance should face south with a tree or shrub nearby for the fledglings to fly to. Never place a box in prevailing winds as it can blow cold wind and rain in the box. February is the best time to place your box since bluebirds will be arriving shortly after to look for nesting sites but you can place a box anytime. If placing more than one box, they should be spaced at intervals of at least 100 yards apart. If you have tree swallows in the area, setting out two boxes about five to 15 feet apart will provide one for the bluebirds and one for the swallows to use. You should avoid placing your box on a tree because trees make the birds more accessible to predators. Placing a box on or near buildings is discouraged as well because this may attract the non-native house sparrow. Placing boxes near brushy areas often attract house wrens. House wrens are native but are very aggressive to bluebirds. If you want to attract a bluebird to your nest box, the best place to put your box is in an open area on a pole away from buildings and brushy areas. Once your box is placed, it's important to monitor it at least once a week to collect data. It's also important to monitor it to assure no problems are occurring, especially from house sparrows and other predators such as snakes, raccoons, and cats. Nest monitoring should only occur during warm and mild weather. The best time of day to check your nest box is early afternoon. Nest boxes should not be opened once the chicks are 12 days old and older to avoid premature fledging. When approaching your box, make some noise to alert the birds of your presence so you don't startle them. Open the box and record any observations you see, such as eggs, hatchlings, and etc. Then close the box. You should never touch or handle native birds, eggs, or their young. It is illegal without a permit. It is also illegal to possess nests, eggs, or feathers of native birds without a special permit either. You are allowed to monitor your box by simply looking in and recording what you see. If you can positively identify a house sparrow nest, you can and should remove that nest because house sparrows are not native and not a protected bird species and are very detrimental to our native species like the bluebird. If you remove a house sparrow nest, be sure to dispose of it far away from the box to avoid attracting predators. At the end of the nesting season, the nest boxes should be cleaned out 
or they should be cleaned out prior to the new nesting season, which is around February. And if you are ever unsure how to identify the nest, how to prevent predatory problems, or where to send the data that you have collected, visit the Game Commission's website at pgc.pa.gov. Now let's talk about what you might find in your box. Hopefully, if your objective is to attract bluebirds, this is what you find. A bluebird nest. Again, bluebird nests are a neat cup-shaped nest made out of fine grasses or pine needles. Eggs are usually blue, but sometimes white. However, other native cavity nesting birds may have taken up residency in your box, and that is exciting too. You may find a nest that looks like this. This was a nest built by our native black-capped chickadee. Their nest is a downy nest with a moss base topped with fur and soft plant fibers. Eggs are cream colored with light brown to reddish speckles. Speckles tend to be concentrated on the wider end of the egg. Or you may find the native house wren nest. Their nest is a messy nest of coarse twigs, often with spider webs, lined with fine fibers and downy feathers, usually filling the box. Their eggs are small, glossy, with a brownish color that forms a ring at the wider end of the egg. House wrens are aggressive to bluebirds, but they are a native bird and their nests cannot be removed. If you want to avoid house wrens using your box, place your nest box at least 50 to 200 feet away from woody, brushy areas. You may find a tree swallow nesting in your box. It looks similar to the eastern bluebird nest, but it's often flatter. The nest is constructed of grass and pine needles and usually lined with feathers that curl up over the eggs. Their eggs are white with a pointy end. What you don't want to find in your box is this nest. This is the nest of the non-native house sparrow. Their nests are tall, made of grasses, weeds, trash, and often lined with feathers. Their eggs are white to greenish, with the speckles concentrating at the larger end of the egg. Again, this bird is highly aggressive to bluebirds and our other native birds. Their nests should and can be removed legally. Sometimes something other than a bird may be using your nest box, like this flying squirrel. Even if a bluebird or another native bird does not use your box, yet a native species does use your box, you're still providing a space for an animal that needed it. I hope you learned something interesting about the Eastern Bluebird today and hopefully are inspired to place and monitor a nest box of your own to help continue the Bluebird's survival. If you have any questions or would like additional information, please visit pgc.pa.gov. Thank you and have a wonderful day.